Hi, I'm Tom Murphy. I'm going to talk today about the potential uh, prospect for a peak in the civilizational power that we use. And when I say power, I mean energy per time. Uh, units are watts, that's joules per second. Um, so it's the rate at which or the speed at which we use energy. And so this, the entire society right now, the global energy use rate is something like 18 to 19 trillion watts, terawatts. And again, that's a 24-7 uh, continuous rate at which we use power. So I'm going to um, go over why we care about this, which is everything that modern society does really involves energy from the extraction and mining of materials and, and lumber and all these kinds of uh, products from the land, transporting all that stuff around and people, manufacturing, and processing the agriculture, not only the fertilizer, which uses natural gas as the basically an energy source and um, the mechanization of the process, all the construction and on and on. It's a huge list, really almost everything you can think of. Just look around you. So in short, it's kind of the economic scale. So how much power we use is very tightly correlated to the total scale of our economy. But also it relates to the amount of ecological destruction. So those things are in tension, economic health and ecological health, because all of it comes from somewhere and all of it has impacts. So uh, either way, a peak in power of our global enterprise is a big deal and it's something I'd like to understand more. So I'm going to come at it from a demographic angle. And these numbers show the 2020 fertility rates, which, um, you know, basically um, relate to the number of children a woman is expected to have at this moment in time. You know, this is the current uh, sort of demographic um, expression of how many children women today, uh, childbearing age women are having. So um, the size of the number here is proportional to the population in the region. And anything below 2.1 is below replacement, which is basically everywhere but Africa. It's hard to see, but over near Australia, that's 2.16. So, but, but by now it's falling. So it's basically below replacement everywhere uh, except for Africa. But where the population is huge in Asia, it's already tucked down below two. That's very important. So um to do a demographic model you need to understand two things you need to understand births and deaths and i went over some of this in a previous video but just as a reminder the total fertility rate um, we have data back before 2020 and then beyond that all you can do is a model or a projection and this is what the un projects and you'll see that prior to 2020 all the regions of the world were falling pretty quickly and then some kink happens when they turn on their model and say no we're going to arrest that climb, I mean, that, that descent, and we're going to, in some cases, climb back up and go towards some stable endpoint, which, you know, could happen, but it's not necessarily, doesn't make it real. It's just a, a big assumption. So I replaced it with this uh, test model where I'm allowing all of the demographic uh, transitions that are happening right now, the um, declining fertility rates to continue and then stabilize at some reasonable values between the one and two, where many of the countries in the world are today. I don't really care so much about the long-term stability. I'm really interested in what's happening over the next short term. And, you know, it's all fantasy beyond that. So um, uh, another thing to point out is I'm allowing Africa to be even more sluggish than the UN in this projection because uh, it really doesn't um, affect the overall outcome of peak power because Africa uses so little uh, per capita. So the other thing that goes into it is the deaths, and this is the survival rate for different age groups. I went over this in the previous video as well. Um, but the main point is that the UN assumes that it's just going to keep going up and up and up. And that's what it has done, so that's what it will do. That's kind of the, the mindset. And, you know, again, I can't say that's not going to happen, but just looking at the life expectancy in the U.S. over the last 
well, I guess that's about my lifetime. Um, the last, the, there was a 10 year plateau between about 2009 to 2019. Um, and the actual all time peak is at 2014. And then we had COVID that took a little bite out of it. But the point is that up and up and up isn't always the way things are. It's already not the way things are. So I at least entertain the notion that maybe things would go this way, that um, going forward, we just lock in the 2023 survival rates and just carry that out. I'm not saying I think this is real. It's just something to explore. It's a possibility. It's a limiting case. Um, it might actually not be a limiting case. It could actually decline. So that's something to keep in mind because we will face a lot of challenges going forward and we're seeing them mount. Um, so no guarantees here, but I guess the, the, the bottom line is, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not asserting any of these things. I'm just exploring what the consequences of such things would be. So here's the other piece that we need to understand peak power, which is the power per capita, uh, as a function of region. And here we see that Northern America is quite large and Europe and Oceania uh, and Africa is, is rather small. So the global average is 2.3, population weighted average is 2.3. Um, and Africa is, you know, a, about a, a quarter of that, uh, less than a quarter of that. So that turns out to, that's why Africa's growth is not central to this part of the story. It's really Asia's um, story that, that matters more. Okay, so when you put all this together, here's what comes out for the model where I've got my fertility rate uh, alternative and a flat health distribution or you know uh, trajectory going forward, we end up with a peak at about 2037 for the world, the, the dark line at the top. And we're almost, we're at the dashed line, we're almost there. I mean, we're basically feeling or experiencing the world as at peak. Um, and you see below that, that Asia is a big contributor. That's the gray curve, um, sort of midway down. And that's a, a large contributor. Now, other scenarios that are worth mentioning is the UN, if you take their vanilla model where their population peaks in 2086, but the power actually peaks in 2061. So it's 25 years earlier than the population peak. If you take the UN model and their, their fertility rate, but you just flatten health, now it comes down to 2048. If you t keep their health projection, but use the declining TFR um, fertility rate, it's 2044. And depending on what I change in these models, I can get down as low as 2034, so 10 years from now. Um, and of course, things could be even sooner. I mean, things happen and uh, the world's not obligated to follow our models in any way. I'm just going to throw up this plot because it's a, a real echo. This is the limits to growth work that was originally in 1972. This is an update 30 years later. And it's their, not their standard run, but the one where they double the resources. And it's the one that's closest to data so far. Um, it shows the peak of population, you know, in the 2040 period um, and industrial output, which is kind of what I'm tracking here also in that same ballpark. So, um, you know, I wasn't trying to do that. It's just this is where the demographics with the current trends are sending things. So a few comments here. Um, this is kind of a big deal because this this puts us in uncharted territory. Um, something that our modern system has never had to face a long contraction and so the economic health is not going to like this the economists don't like it it looks like a contraction and possibly a very long-term contraction so investment is discouraged i mean what does a long-term investment even mean um if if you're looking at such a decline so the growth um uh, model of our economy is is seriously jeopardized by a declining um, physical economy in terms of energy. So, and that's not necessarily bad because 
economic health and ecological health, as I pointed out before, are in tension with with each other. And so it's kind of like, um, you know, the health of a tumor is inversely related to the health of the host. And so you don't want to go to your doctor and have them say, good news, your tumor is doing great. Uh, I project 5% growth in the next quarter. It's going to expand into new markets, you know, in your body. And this is going to be, this is very exciting. A lot of, a lot of changes. This is going to be good. Um, that's not what we want to hear. Um, so I'm proposing that we get off of team tumor and consider uh, joining team life, rejoining team life. That's where we all came from. Um, and what, what was it like to live as a member of the community in ecological balance of some sort? I, I don't want to give the misimpression that I'm calling humans a tumor or cancerous. Uh, humans aren't the cancer. It's the system that we find ourselves in, that we're trapped in, um, that's chewing through the planet. And that's not intrinsic to us. And it's not in our DNA. Okay. Most of the time that humans have been on this planet have not been in this stunt that we're currently uh, pulling. So as long as the total fertility rate continues to decline for roughly a decade scale, which it's been declining for something like a decade. So we're not talking about needing it to do this for the next 50 years. I mean, this is all fairly near term. Uh, so as long as those keep declining and, and so far no in, in sight, they've since 2020, they keep coming down. Um, it looks like we, we might hit a peak civilizational power in the next 10 or 20 years. And I think it looks like a much different world after that. And I don't know what all that means. Nobody does, but it's something to at least be aware of and start thinking about and start thinking about what's important and, um, you know, where it goes from there. I don't know, but at least, you know, it's on my radar and I hope Maybe it can be on yours too. So for additional information, I've got a blog called Do the Math and I have been putting weekly updates there. I've got a whole series lately on population at dothemath.ucsd.edu. So check that out and I'll see you later.